In 1922, a forester by the name of Benton McKay wrote a greatly detailed plan for a grand trail that was originally designed to be a link between a series of farms, wilderness, and work or study camps for the city dwellers. In 1922, Major William A. Welsh, the director of the Palisades Interstate Park Commission, suggested to McKay that he publish his idea to the world. Raymond Torrey wrote an article in the New York Evening Post, which appeared on the front page under a headline reading, A Great Trail from Georgia to Maine. The Palisades Park Trail Conference immediately adopted this idea as their main project, and on October 7, 1923, the first section of the trail was open to the public. In 1948, Earl Schaffer completed the world's first documented thru-hike. Later, in 1998, Schaffer hiked the trail again at almost 80 years old, making him the oldest person ever to hike the Appalachian Trail. In 1955, at the age of 67, Emma Gatewood, upon discovering that no woman had ever hiked the entire Appalachian Trail, set out to prove that it could be done. Unfortunately, the first attempt at the thru-hike was abruptly ended when her glasses broke and she had to return home. Finally, in 1957, she completed the trek from Maine to Georgia. Not satisfied, Emma hiked the trail again in 1960, and again in 1963, now at the age of 75. The length of the Appalachian Trail is widely disputed. Some sources now approximate its length at 2,181 miles, others say 2,050 miles, and others say 2,165 miles. No one can settle on a single length. I got blew up one time. I was laying in my hammock. A guy and a girl was in their, in their uh, sleeping bag still cooking breakfast with a Coleman pump fuel. Uh -oh. And uh, it was kind of hilarious. It blew up in the inside and everything caught on fire inside and it was putting it out. But it kicked it out from under me. Like, <laughs> and I felt something hot as soon as my shoe it got my shoe string here. Good. I woke up and I kicked it like a football. It went about a good 15 feet away from me and it started whistling. And when it started whistling, the next thing they said, all right, get down, get down, get down. It's a completely full bottle of Coleman fuel. Ooh. And when it started whistling like a jet, and it just went kaboom. I was like, man, that could have been me. They, they weren't worried about, they were putting their stuff out of there. And I was like, hey, what about me? <laughs> so it was kind of funny, but in a way, there wasn't a part where I'd say it's the least favorite at all, um, but I'd say the best, like the most scenic part was definitely me. Um, it was the most difficult terrain, but it was just, just incredible. Um, my father and me were going to hike it and he had passed away and I did it after, it was sort of a dream. Oh yes, I've encountered a lot of bears. <laughs> When all my clothes are moldy and damp and wet. <laughs> that would be my worst day, just being out here. Um, the people and the AT community. Trail magic is a neat thing. Uh, the only sad thing about it is uh, I think many hikers get to expecting it. And uh, that's not a good thing. They shouldn't necessarily expect it. Uh, it should just happen, but it's, it's a fun thing for the people who do it as well as a uh, neat thing for the hikers as well. I do that myself. I maintain a section of the AT from Deets Gap North to Sulphur Springs Trail, 2.7 miles. And when I go up to work on the trail, I'll usually take a cooler of uh, drinks and food and uh, share it with them. Uh, sometimes I'll invite the hikers home. Uh, so I give out trail magic and uh, I also have had trail maps a few times on the AT. Uh, when I did it, I had it, had it a few times, not too many, and a few times on the PCT. It's not as much on the PCT as the AT because, again, it's just so inaccessible. But back on the trail for two weeks this time. I got on the trail last year and spent two and a half months coming from Springer to uh, basically Parisburg, south of here. And uh, I had a problem with my eye. I had to go back to Birmingham to our fine eye foundation hospital to get that repaired. And then I came back in July and tried to hike in July. It was too hot for me to hike in the mid 90s in July on the, in southern Virginia. 
So I stayed two weeks that time and I was coming back in the fall, but I, I got a call from a buddy of mine who lives in Machias, Maine. He's a canoe outfitter and guide. And he said he had a small group that wanted to go float the Allagash. Did I want to come join that small group to float the Allagash? I said, yes. So that's what I did last fall and now I came back. Two weeks ago today, I got back on the trail and hiking north, continuing on. Everybody else is using my iodine drops, little drops to put in it, or even a filter. Yeah. I just take my band down here, cover my hole, dip the cup in it, fill it up. That's all I do. And have a nice again. Knock on wood.